Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk and we are looking at the March 2018 edition of the White Dwarf magazine. So, um, as you can probably guess, it's all about the Daughters of Cain and on the front it says in the name of Cain we have paint splatter and mortai and tau and lots more in this issue, so let's just delve right in. Okay, so first up we have a little bit about Malign Portents. We have a global online campaign. There's also Malign Portents Painting Competition, month three. And as always, we have the White Wolf team and the Edda's Lair. We also have the contents. And we haven't well too much on these because we are going to go through page by page. So, of course, Planet Warhammer is all about the releases upcoming, and of course, they are going to be the Doors of Cain. So, we have their Battle Tome, and War Scroll cards, it's dice as well. So, we have the Cain Mulusai. Um, these are really cool, um, I really look forward to these. They are going to be pre-order on the 3rd, um, to be released on the 10th, as well as the um, Canary. I'm probably getting these completely wrong. These are really cool, I cannot wait to, to sell the bits for these on the site. Them wings are no doubt going to be very popular, because they are very nice. They remind me of the Scourge wings. I mean, they're very sim similar to um, the Dark Elder Scourges, and would probably make really good alternatives for them as well. Um, these kits, £30 for these and £27.50 for these, so um, whilst they probably make good alternatives, they're not cheap alternatives. And yeah, I don't know why these are quite expensive army, because the Witch Elves are quite expensive as well. Um, Moral Tire herself is £80, and it's actually too bad considering she's a much um, larger model. She's a very large model, and you get the two variants as well. Um, really cool. Certainly going to pick up her in a couple of weeks and I look forward to painting her indeed so um, also we have Tau Tau are getting their codex this month as well that's when the pre-orders go up on 10th so it's only a two week release for the Daughters of Cain and they have data cards, collector's edition and regular codex and Battlefield in a box so we have the Blasted um, Hello Heart. So this is very similar to what we had in 40k with the Moonbase um, one. It's a double-sided board. Um, I assume it's cardboard. And then you get the ruins that come with it as well. Um, really looking forward to getting a few sets of them. Um, I'm not too into these boards. Um, they're 5 by. Um, 5, 6 by 3, 8, which is really strange. It should be 6 by 4. Um, the other one as well was the same. Whilst they're trying to get them to fit an average dining room table, it would be nice if they were bigger. Um, so yeah, but if you're someone who just games casually at home, they're quite cool, but yeah, if you've got a club or um, you wouldn't see these up in your local shop, I wouldn't have thought. Unless they're pushed for space. Um, yeah, they are nice though. And the quality is quite good. But um, these ruins certainly well interested in. And I'll be picking up a few sets of them. Very nice. Um, latest from Forge World. Um, Robledorn. Absolutely beautiful miniature. Um, big fan of Robledorn. Um, as a character and the miniature. Something I do want to pick up. Although I probably want to improve my painting skills before I, I attempt something like him. Um, I've painted a few Primarchs, but he's someone who I'd want to do an extra special job on. We also have the licensed games. So there's Horus Heresy, Battle at Kelf. Um, a turn-based strategy game. Um, Advanced Sons of Cadia. There's a new playable army for 3D turn-based strategy game, Sanctus Reach, and it's the Astra Militarum.
Next up we have Black Library, so there's a Car Caradon's book. Um, very cool. And um, we have Gene Sealer Cult book as well, um, and the Gash book, and Titan's Bane, which is an audio drama set inside a Shadow Sword Super Heavy Tank. So a little bit on the Daughters of Cain. So this is essentially, this is it. That that is, that is what you get for them. Um, I don't know if there's any going to be any more units in the book. Obviously, all these. Sets apart from the no, even the Doomfire of Warlocks do make um, two different units, as well as the Cauldron of Blood makes a couple as well, and of course there's characters that come with that, such as the Medusa as well. So you probably overall you've probably got about 13, 14 units, but only like the six boxes. And we have the contact page. Um, Temporal Distort. This is going way, way back to September 1992. And this is when um, a new edition of Warhammer Fantasy came out. Um, before my time, I'm trying to work out what edition that might have been. Possibly fourth? Correct me if I'm wrong, I might be completely wrong, but the first edition to have an actual boxed game. And that was um, High Elves vs Goblins. And also, um, the World Eaters made their first appearance. Can you believe it? So, 1992. And also, a little bit um, just quite interesting here. Um, did you know that there was once a Warhammer Records label? Well, there was, and this issue saw the release of Danger Calling, the debut album by the band Wraith. So, check them out if they're on YouTube or Spotify. So, we have getting started with uh, Horus Heresy. So all the different um, legions there. Gigantic tomes, the beautiful, beautiful Horus Heresy books. Um, if you've got the money to spend, I do recommend them. They are absolutely gorgeous. And um, we have a story from Malign Portents. Um, again, I recommend, I recommend anyone who likes their stories to read the Malign Portents ones. They've all been very good so far. So we have designer's notes looking at the Daughters of Cain, of course. Really nice bit of concept art for Moratai. Um, I actually quite like that scheme more than, more than this one. That just seems quite bright for my liking. I would go something more dark and sinister, and I really do like that. I have a Scaveborn. Um, Illuminations is all looking at Tau Empire artwork. Um, beautiful cityscapes. Really want to see GW do some Tau terrain. That'd be so nice. So lots of Tau artwork there. So battle report: Death from the Shadows. So Stores of Canes versus Le Legion of Nagash. So the two latest. But it's going head to head. We'll have a quick look at the battlefield because it's really nice. I really like that. I really like how they've got like the light colour scheme on that. That's really cool. A lot easier to paint than like black and gold. So yeah, I'm looking at that and thinking maybe, maybe I'll paint mine up that way. Because you could literally just get away of a base coat, wash and dry brush. So yeah, really nice. I do find myself admiring the scenery on these battle reports almost as much as I enjoy reading the games. And um, we're going to flick to the end so we don't give away no spoilers. Um, a little bit about library releases. Then we have collecting Perturabo's Iron Legion, so an absolutely mammoth um, Horus Heresy Iron Warriors army with some Mechanicum in there as well. Wow. Love to work out how much will this cost. Massive um, Reaver Titan in there as well. But beautiful army. Jet bikes, land speeders. Not something you'd really expect to find in an Iron Warriors army, but this is more like it. This is more like what you would expect to find. 
But hey, um, this army's got everything by the looks of it. And of course the Titan, absolutely gorgeous. One day I will get myself a Reaver because I absolutely love them. One day. And we have a few close-ups, we have Petrobo himself. A little bit about how the army is painted. And really nice, I love the weather on the hazard stripes. Really adds something to them. Hall of Fame. So Hall of Fame is back and it's got a new look. Here we talk to the people in the know. The talented members of the studio design team to find out what, in their opinion, makes a great Citadel miniature. Um, Citadel Hall of Fame inductee is Festus the Leech Lord, which is actually a gorgeous miniature. Um, one I've been wanting to pick up myself for so long because I actually love a miniature, so something I'll definitely do in the future. Um, a Tale of Four Warlords continues, so have some additions, and it looks to be they are all getting their malign portents characters. Really cool. Um, the Goblin looks well out of place for the Ogres, but still very nice. These armies are growing and they are looking good. Really nice. Classic 2017 Golden Demon. Absolutely beautiful Magoth Lord there. Our Shator. Beautiful miniature. What a great paint job on that. And I love the Source Light and on this one, absolutely stunning. Great base as well. Um, oh, could just look at the Golden Demon entries all day, couldn't you? Um, Battleground, we're looking at Angels and Plague. So it's um, Death Guard and um, Dark Angels, sorry. So, um, yeah, in this section, they look at the big displays. Warhammer World, the missiles coming off there. Um, really cool. They look like they've been done very similar to how I did um, Dragonfire. So um, if you wanted to do, replicate something like this, um, feel free to watch my Dragonfire tutorial on the channel. Somewhere in the hobby section. Um, somewhere, I don't know if it's in Paint and or Convert, and I can't remember where I put it. Um, but yeah, they've, it looks very similar to that. It's very easy to do. And it's a gorgeous effect, actually, coming off the Thunderhawk. Just a little shameless plug for her own stuff there. But absolutely stunning, and look at that Titan. Absolutely amazing. And all these Reaver Titans, they're trying to send me a message, I think. Absolutely gorgeous. So, painting, we have the Heavy Metal Masters. So, um, taking a look at the work of Angel um, Wehrgren, I hope I've pronounced that right, it could be Wehrgren. Um, I've seen a lot of Angel's work online, absolutely fantastic um, miniature painter. Um, just, just hobby porn for the last few pages, just so many gorgeous miniatures and displays and stuff. Um, if you like looking at all beautifully painted miniatures, then you are in for a treat in this issue. And it doesn't stop there, um, we have Blanjitsu as well. Another warband, this one's making good use of um, all manners of stuff, really. We have some Goliath stuff in there, you, as you can see. We have, um, what's it called? Completely gone. That'll actually tell me in here, won't it? Oh, you guys know what that miniature is made from? I just can't remember off the top of my head. I got one, the Mongol. Mongol. There we go. And um, very cool. Very cool. I really, really love that miniature. I mean, that's stunning. Big fan of Blanjitsu stuff, as you guys probably know. You regular viewers certainly know my love for Blanjitsu. And yeah, we'll, we'll do some more Blanjitsu stuff on our channel, no doubt. Always inspired every time I, s I see this section. Next we have some rules. So first up we have Stake a Claim. 
this is essentially a race mission. So you take your Cadron Overlord Skyship, um, so, and your opponent takes his, and you basically race from one end to the other, and there's all rules for how to play that. Sounds pretty fun. And quite a lot of rules for that, actually. You know, almost as many rules as Age of Sigma itself. <laughs> and um, we have Gene Sealer Cult rules for Necromunda. Very excited for this. I have a small amount of Gene Sealer Cult. Enough, basically enough to play them in Necromunda and not much else. So, very cool. I look forward to maybe giving them a run out sometime. And all their weapon rules are here as well. Paint Splatter is next, so all about paint and tow and Moratai as it said on the front cover, so let's have a look. And it's nice that, I'm um, just going back, that they have all this little section now, So I think it's really cool. So yeah, we have Moratai, paint in the um, small version, the regular human version. I have a feeling the large version may get a video on Warhammer TV, if it hasn't already. And then we have Fire Warriors and Battle Suits. And I'm going to show you some different set colour schemes as well. And then we have a little bit for Tau Empire, so... And some of their miniatures. I don't think that's all of them, is it? No, there's no... No Fire Warriors listed there, so... But very cool. Um, never been a massive Tau fan, mind you, but... It's nice that all the sets are getting their own rules in the codex though. Um, painting and collecting, it's a hero challenge. So this is the head office painting challenge. Always enjoy enjoy them. So keep them coming, GW. And we have the reader's models. And as always, um, they're all brilliant, aren't they? I mean, that, the colours. On this Lord of Change is absolutely stunning. Um, I love the blue on Reboot A. Gilliman as well. Really nice. Um, always stunning miniatures in these pages. And then we have a spotlight as well. So this is John um, Maggiotta. I hope I pronounced that right. Nevertheless, um, really like the sort of muted coloured palettes he uses here. Especially like on the Hellbrute and on the for corn miniatures, um, very sort of muted, and yeah, it works stunningly. And um, we just have a white dwarf guide. Wild wild section um, looks a lot nicer in this light blue and white. And then we have in the bunker, so the white dwarf team's miniatures. A little bit about building more tie. And then a little battle. Again, some of the terrain. Stunning. And then we just have the um, um, magma drop that's been painted. Very cool. So next month, Malign Portents. We have Battleground, Ancient Evils, Heavy Metal. Another battle report, some Necromunda rules, Middle Earth, and much, much more. And that is White Dwarf March 2018. So, really cool issue. Lots of really nice, lots of really nice stuff. And lots of great painted miniatures. And... Yeah, I'm going to end this quickly. I just got a text that my sister has just turned up for a surprise visit. I think she just wants to see the baby. So I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching, of course. Um, like, subscribe. And I'll see you all again in the next video.